Feeling very great to have you join us right here on Sports Republic. Good morning to you, beautiful people out there. Welcome to a very great time again on your TV screen. We'll talk about sports uh, this morning. I'm feeling very, very, very fly on the show because, um, I don't know, maybe I'm just, I don't know, I'm just, I'm just sometimes it comes to be that way. But then uh, we'll be corresponding. We'll get to meet our correspondent, Hobo reporter live from Ivory Coast, Joseph Atewe. He will be on the South Line later on. Uh, Maya will also be joining us virtually on the show. Uh, this morning, but you know what he has to say all the time. We talk about the African Cup of Nations 2023, and this time around, NFL debunks Sadiq Kumar fake injury rumor. And you might be wondering why would we want to talk about this? The Nigerian Football Federation NFF has denied reports circulating around the incompetence of the Super Eagles medical team. The medical team has come under intense criticism after Kumar Sadiq was seen in a video training with the Spanish club Real Sociedad. Sadiq was replaced by Paulo Nacho, uh, in the Tottenham Sport and Nigeria team, and in the squad of the 23 African Cup of Nations after sustaining a knee injury in a friendly game against the Guinea, the 26 year old returned to Spain last weekend, was expected to be sidelined for three weeks. The camp of Nigeria's senior men's time to our football team, Super Eagles, have decried, reporting section of the media that have continued to garnish the medical case of Spanish based forward Sadiq Kumar with conspiracy theories, incorrect assumptions also, and unbecoming insinuations. The camp has released a statement with regards to how the player was withdrawn from the Nigerian squad for the 34th edition of the African Cup Nation in Ivory Coast. My name is Kizike. Welcome to, uh, you know, to the Sport Republic. And now me alone, we've got another man in the studio. All right, to the closer, welcome to the show. Definitely, uh, so much to talk about in the science world of sports. My name is Jerry Apeyohai, and of course, moving straight to the business of the day, where Victor Simon Moses Simon and William Trust Ekong Olaino and Frank Oyeka were all exempted from Super Eagles recovery session on Monday. All right, the Super Eagles returned to their Equal National de la Police training pitch on Monday evening following Sunday's opening fixture against Equatorial Guinea at the 2023 Africa Cup of Nations. It was learned that the doctors advised the quintet to sit out the session in order to ease their recovery. New arrivals Kelechi Nato, Teremi Murphy and Paul Onwachu all took part in the session. Midfielder Alassane Yusuf missed the session as he's yet to fully recover from the injury he sustained against Equatorial Guinea. The right. Super Eagles will continue uh, to their preparation for the game against Cote d'Ivoire on uh, Thursday. Okay, so uh, that's the news, uh, Jerry. It sounds very funny. Let's do with the, uh, the first one, uh, you know, Sadiq Kumar. That news doesn't sound good to me. But let's connect live, uh, you know, our guests are just behind the waiting. Hello, are you there? Hello, can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you clearly. Hello? Yeah, I can hear you clearly. I can hear you. Okay, uh, not sounds like it's not so clear, uh, Bob. Before. Hello, hello, can you hear me, yeah, my wife? Okay, Maya, well, yeah, how, you, you how are you doing? Good morning to you. Yeah, good morning. How are you doing? Great to have you join us on the show. Uh, yes. Quickly, let's talk now. Um, uh, I have Jerry with me. Okay. Yeah, Jerry, good morning. How are you doing? Yes, good morning, Maya. Okay, so Maya, well, let me quickly share this with you now. You heard me saying the Nigerian Football Federation, NFF, has denied reports circulating around the incompetence of the Super Eagles medical team. The medical team has come under intense criticism on the, after Sadiq Kumar. Uh, was seen training in his club side <laughs> in Real Sociedad. that. Don't forget, that's the man we talked about who left camp, uh, being replaced by Paul Nacho, the Turkish uh, outfit player. And right now, uh, Sadi Kumar is not in the team, but he's training with Real to say that. It sounds funny to talk about. <laughs> What's your take on that, quickly? <laughs> Hello, Mayawa? Yes, I can hear you. Did you hear me, did you hear me clearly? Yeah, I can hear you clearly. So yes, I talked I about Sadi Kumar. What's your take on that? Yes, I mean, probably maybe, maybe, see, the, the thing is this, probably the um, Sadiq Kumar and the medical team, probably maybe they, they were in cahoots together. How do, you, how do you certify that somebody is injured and the next thing, the person is seen training in his, in his particular, in his club? Okay. It, shows that, um, it shows that even Sadiq Kumar himself was not even really committed to playing for the Super Eagles. You know, mm. these are the few things that we've said over and over again in terms of how people treat the Nigerian badge. Um, people do not value the Nigerian badge. I don't understand why you have to fake injury to right. go back to your club before, you know, will fake injury to leave the tournament and the next thing you are training with your club. I mean, also the medical team, I think there's a need to do a thorough investigation 
to find the culprit. I mean, who certified the report that he was actually injured, mm. who, who okayed him to, to leave the camp. I think there is a need for us to be able to, to investigate that and sanction wherever it needs to be sanctioned. It means there are fifth columnists in our team, mm. and we don't need that right now, to be honest with you. Okay, so Mayowa, how... how <laughs> See, I don't know who do you think uh, should be blamed on this very one because now the body governing the game, NFF, has come to say uh, this is incompetence from the medical side. It doesn't really sound like a good news uh, for me. And also, I want to know why do you think Osadi Kumaru would prefer to be in Russia, say that side, other than playing for Nigeria when other players, you know, all African players are representing that country. We know how big this call up is for players to join the national side. Uh, well, um, we, I, I've said it over and over again. Um, if you make reference to, you know, uh, um, our show on, on on the weekend, one of right. the things I said was a, a whole lot of these foreign based players they don't rate Nigeria. Mm. I mean, we have a whole lot of local league players that would have probably cherished the call and want to die for the green white green badge. However, we have somebody who would rather fake injury to run back to his club. Mm. That's the first thing. The number two thing is this: the the medical team. Who are they working for? Are they working for Nigeria? Or they are working for the player it wow. shows the level of corruption that we have mm. you know within the team and this is the reason why we have a whole lot of mediocre players making the team why would Sedi kumar you know join the team waste the slot and now faking yeah, to return back to his and club and, and start training mm. it doesn't really make any logical sense so there's yeah. a need for a comprehensive investigation and those involved i think they should be they should be dealt with thoroughly i think i think Ma 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 if, they, if they are found wanting Yes. Mario, if I'm correct, let's not make assumptions because we need to be very, very careful uh, in that aspect. Because if you take a look at it, according to the NFF, they released a statement that the medical team actually saw some bit of swelling, a lot of swelling in that uh, knee. Mm. And of course, we all know how the body works. Things can actually happen. Medical um, science is quite different from logical right. um, and reasoning mm -hmm. because... If the doctor certified that he was injured and he returned back to his club side, his club side, he was out for six months. I, for one, question his involvement in the nation's club because this is a player who just returned from a six-month injury and for the fact that even playing for Real Sociedad in the Spanish League, he has not been a mainstay. He's just been, they've just been trying to bring him into the team. So let's, let's not jump into conclusions. Let's just wait and see how matters unfold. Because Vic Legon said he was at the last AFCON in Cameroon. Mm -hmm. And uh, for me, I don't, I've not really seen his impact to the team. So he himself should be hungry to play for the Super Eagles. So we should not jump into conclusions. We should still wait for the follow-up of what is going to happen. If it's going to actually, because training is different from playing on game day. He has not played in a real game. So let's be careful. What do you think? Well, so... <laughs> Hello. Uh, it feels like uh, we are breaking with Mayawa. Mayawa, can you hear us very clearly? Are you there? I can hear you now. I can hear you now. You I can hear you. What Jerry asked you. Go ahead. Yes, you know, they said innocent until proven guilty, right? Right. Yes. However, they, they, you know, what, what, what begs the question is this who were, who were the medical guys that certified him, you know, to. To, to, that he's actually injured and for him to go back to his club. That's yeah. the first thing. Two, if this is a player that has gotten injured for about six months, right. he has not been playing, he just got back, mm. why did he make the team? That's Those are the critical question, questions right. we need to ask. Yeah. Why did he make the team in the first place? I mean, if we, we understand a particular clinic in our everybody understood that he was injured. However, you know, probably maybe on the assistance of the um, NFF members and the rest of that, they had to allow him into the team. However, who certified, who, who gave him a call up? Somebody who is just coming back from injury. And this same person who is coming back from injury, you know, has started training for his club. However, he could not make it for Nigeria. Wasting that particular, those are the questions we need to ask. And that is where, that's where, you know, we begin to think that something fishy is really going on as regards that. Okay. In as much as we don't want to start pointing, accusing fingers. Okay, so, so if, I, if, I, if I get you right, uh, Mayawa, are you there? 
Yes, I can so hear if you. If I get it right, let me uh, let me get you on this because we have um, also Joseph Atelwe, our mm -hmm. other correspondent from Arabic Coast, mm -hmm. uh, who will be connecting live. So, Maya, while you stay with us, don't go anywhere. Uh, let me get you on this now. Uh, if I get you right, you sound like on Nigerian Super Eagle side, the national team, the NFF, the body. Uh, maybe we shouldn't have called in uh, Sadek Kumara because personally, for me, I've been following the rest of Sadek's football style. You know, the manager, uh, you know, he's a great manager, but he's about get more playing time than you know Omar Omar Sadek. So. So let me know quickly. That's that man. That man talk about uh, Omar Sadiq. Are you saying he should not made the list? But definitely, you know, um, Kizzy, you, you know, you, you know my stand already. Um, you know, we 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 talk almost all the time on radio and the rest of that. Right. And I've made it clear over and over, and over again. Mm. Nigeria do not need players who don't take who don't put Nigeria first. Okay. Um, I don't understand why most of our own base players did not make this particular team. Mm. You. You know, a, a particular player that's not playing regularly is making the team and even have to, you know, decide to go back to his club, wasting that particular slot there. Whereas there's a whole lot of Nigerian players in the league that would have really cherished that particular call. So basically, I wouldn't have expected them to call him. That, that, that place should have been for uh, an own base player. That's okay. just for me, basically. Okay, I understand that. All right. All right, all right, we have our man Joseph um, all the way from Côte d'Ivoire and uh, he's just informed me that um, he's on his way to. Uh, the Super Eagles Hotel to have a chat with them mm -hmm. and to know what's going on. Uh, Joseph, great to have you on the show this morning on Sports Republic. Hello, Joseph. Can you hear me? Joseph. All right. Uh, I think the network are not really friendly. Uh, Joseph, if you can hear us, please, we'd like to take your thoughts on uh, uh, the nation's camp so far. But before... Okay, uh, before we go back uh, to Joseph, let's take more stories from the AFCON. We know games were played yesterday, mm -hmm. and one of those notable games is uh, former uh, champions talking about Algeria, who took on uh, Angola. And uh, Mambululu's uh, penalty was enough to help. I like in the name, Mambululu. <laughs> Mambululu, yeah. And of course, the celebration yeah, more I, like I the that. lion. I love Benjani. You see that's very African style. Yes, the lion celebration. Mm. This penalty was enough to help Angola secure a one-run draw against Algeria in Monday's 2023 African Cup of Nations. Recall that the Desert Forces started the game like a house on fire, controlling possession and creating several goal scoring chances before Baghdad Bukja eventually made it count by scoring the opening goal in the 19th minute. Algeria was just simply the best after the goal as they dominated uh, the play and could have wrapped up the game in the first half, but their profligacy in front of goal left the scoreline 1-0. However, the at the resumption of the second half, Angola took the game straight to Algeria and their efforts were rewarded after Mabululu was brought down inside the penalty box. The result of the penalty was calmly converted by Mabululu in the 68th minute. And uh, of course, all the efforts by both teams to pick the maximum point proved abortive after 90 minutes as Algeria and Angola had to settle for a point. Quite a very interesting game. Yeah, quite game. interesting game. So we take you more about the African Cup of Nations 2023. Uh, Kamara Braves inspires the Ranga Lions victory against the Scorpion. And that's the African champion talk about the Nations Cup Winner the last time Senegal made a big statement in their emphatic 3 0 win against Gambia at Yamuskoro on Monday afternoon. The Teranga Lions of Senegal made a flying start as they went go ahead, you know, in the first minute as Papa Maye and that's the Papa Gay, the name pulled up a stellar finish in the opening salvo in the game. And also, Abel Adams of Gambia was sent off in the stoppage time of the first half after a strong foul on the opposition. By the end of the first half, Senegal went into the break. On a goal added on that very well. The Tanga Lions kept up the momentum from the first half and by the 52nd minute double your lead through young prodigy Lamin Kamara, who popped up, you know, popped up the call line from the Ismaili South Cross. Now, a calling effort into the top corner by Kamara in the 86th minute sailed the deal of the Lions as they won the match. Training a lot of strong defensive and attacking display from Tanga Lions of Senegal ensured that they started off. The defense of the Afcon title in star. Mayawa. Yes. I talk about Senegal all the time. If you if you if you watch me well, you listen to me all the time. Uh, Senegal, a uh, very, very strong side. You know, playing one of the best football in African side. I'm proud of the Senegal leads. You know, the likes of Sadio Mani, uh, you know, Khalido Koulibaly, John Mandy, all of those great players you hear me say. Let me get you on this now. Do you see a Senegal side defending the champion? Well, um, you know, it, it's, it's a possibility. It's a possibility, um, you know, right? 
yeah, it's a possibility. A, a, a whole lot of the big, big, bigger teams they've been, you know, they've not been really doing well. Um, mm. You know, Egypt, Egypt ended up drawing, Ghana losing, um, Cameroon struggling yesterday against Guinea, Nigeria also struggling. Mm. Um, Senegal has decided to show a class of champion, um, dispatching their position 3-0. It shows the kind of um, quality they have, you know. And also remember their coach, Ali Usise, who was also an integral member of the 2002. Um, France defeating World Cup uh, um, team for, uh, of Senegal. So if, if you watch how, how, how they played yesterday, they showed a real intent. And to be honest with you, going by the strength of their performance yesterday, mm. they have a shouting chance at defending their their champion, their, their title. Mm. Because mm. I mean, a whole lot of the big names that we think we come to the party based on the result of the first game, yeah. they've not really come to the party. To be honest mm. with you. So okay, uh, let me quickly come on this now. The North African side, I, I don't want to I don't want to say they are not doing well, but I want to ask you this question. Your opinion, you need to be very sincere with me on this one. Uh, I don't feel impressed sincerely. Uh, we are yet to see the Moroccan side. Everybody knows we are craving to see uh, Morocco come to play. The Walidu Grage, the Odrani, Sofiane Amrabat, Atitiala, you know Yasin Bono, uh, one other team they've got there. But so far, we've seen. Uh, I watched the Algerian side play, and I was so I was so not impressed. I watched. Egypt played a seven-time champion and they felt like they're not doing well <laughs> for themselves. So let's talk about this North African side. Uh, before the start of the tournament, you said uh, you see them as threat. Do you still see them as threat now? Uh, well, you know, you, you, you can't take away um, the class away from them. However, you know, like MM said when we were on the radio about two weeks ago, right. he said something about, you know, the West Africans struggling where whenever there is a tournament being hosted, yeah. uh, especially in the western region of Africa, mm. I think basically that, that that's what they are struggling with. If you watch how Algeria and um, Egypt played yeah. uh, in, in their games, you could see that they were really struggling. They were really they were in, they weren't really in the game. They were really struggling with the, with the tempo right, of right. the game, and it really had a bearing on their performance. But basically, I, I would expect that you know. Because of the kind of um, because of the kind of quality they possess, mm. they should be able to turn it around. Um, you, you you can't really judge with the first game okay. in as much as in as much as the first game left little or nothing to be desired. But you know some some of these teams they they tend to grow into the competition, <laughs> and I won't be surprised if you see Egypt and um, Algeria bounce back All and right. do well in the tournament. All right, <laughs> Mario, Mario. Well, before we go forward, we know that a lot of um, uh, talking about the foreign based players have complained about the weather in in Cote d'Ivoire. Mm. And uh, do you think that's enough excuse for the top teams not to perform? Taking a look at the way Senegal has performed, despite the heat, they've been able to dispatch their opening three goals to nil. Can we now say this is just a, a, a flimsy excuse from the other uh, teams who have foreign based players as well? Uh, well, the, 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 the thing is, is well, for, for the Senegalese, first of all, you need to understand that the Senegalese, they are from the West African region of... Uh, <laughs> Of Africa, okay. I mean, so they are they are they are very they are very accustomed to the weather. However, you know, <laughs> when, there is, when there is failure, I'm complaining about it as well. Yeah, yes, I, I, I'm I'm coming there. However, when there is failure, mm. there's a whole lot of you know there's a lot of excuses that can go around. People will start making excuses and the rest of that. However, if you look at in as much as yes, the weather there's a contributive factor as regards the weather because of the temperature, I mean, you, you can see that they were giving them cooling break mm. after every 30 minutes and just so that it shows how hot the weather is. However, that should not, be, that should not take away right. from the level of performance that is expected from the players. A whole lot of these top teams, they were not living up, they didn't live up to the expectation mm. and the result is for everyone to see. I mean, if you look at Egypt yesterday, you can, Egypt, uh, two days ago, Egypt cannot make the complaint that it's the weather that made them struggle throughout the game. I mean, they just didn't live up to the expectation. And I think it's, it's high time um, they start living up to their name, or else we begin to see shockers in, in, in the Afghan tournament. Okay, all right. All right, uh, moving to what happened to the Cameroonians uh, who fought back to hold 10 man Guinea to a 1 1 draw in their opening 2023 African Cup of Nations Group C game at the Charles Coden Barney Stadium in Yamasokro on Monday night. The results saw the five time African champions start their Group C campaign with a draw against the National Elephants, who were able to frustrate Cameroon from their stand-in captain uh, after their sending captain was sent off. The two teams will be in action again on Friday as Cameroon lock hunts with defending champion Senegal in a blockbuster clash, while Guinea are set to square off uh, with their West African rivals Gambia. It took the National Elephants just 10 minutes to break the deadlock 
after some poor defending by the indomitable Lions. Mohamed Bayo was afforded time and space to unleash a low shot from inside the box to hand Guinea and won the lead. The five-time African champions responded by exerting pressure on Guinea, who were reduced to uh, 10 players in the first half stoppage time. Francis Kamanu was shown a straight red card uh, for making a dangerous challenge on Frank Magri, but Guinea were leading 1-0 at the interval. Magri was the man who leveled matters with a decent finish to make it 1-1 in the 51st minutes, having been set up by judges Kevin Gano. But before we go that way, let's just right. say this is the same Guineans that right. defeated the Super Eagles. Yeah, they got Now, the can we give them the respect they deserve? They should be giving some respect. I mean, some accolades should be given to the Guineans. You know why? Yeah. Uh, because they played against the Cameroonian side and knowing full well, the Cameroonians are big child. They were one man down. They were still holding their yeah, own. Yeah, they did so well for me. I think the, the, the manager is, is doing a great job for me. Yeah, definitely. Okay, so before we go on a quick break, uh, Mayawa, uh, let's get you yes. on this now quickly. Andrew Onana, that team. Uh, <laughs> Andrew Onana, you got you laughing as well. Andrew Onana is not in the team, but he just joined. We know uh, the move from North, to the North Africa, sorry, I beg your pardon, the, you know, the yeah. Tottenham Hospital side, uh, making a move all the way to Cameroon, joining the camp in Ivory Coast. And looking at Andrew Onana's uh, reaction, I think I, at some point I want to say we, are, we feel disrespected that African players are not really making their mark when it happens to be you have to return home for national call-up. Uh, Andrew Onana for you now, if you're a good bet song, if you're the manager of the team, say it to my face, tell me the way it is, do you think an Onana should be given the opportunity to man the post again? Uh, well, I, I, I think, I mean, for, for, for him to, to have decided to stay back and stroll into the team, I mean, I saw them you the when one, they were You're the one stroll into the team. <laughs> Yeah, strolling to the team. I okay. mean, I mean, he doesn't respect, he doesn't respect the team, and Hugo Besong allowed that to happen. Mm. I mean, and on 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 the brighter side of things, his cousin was in the post. Ondoa is his cousin, okay. and the person in the post for Cameroon is the cousin to another. However, for me, you know, I said it on Saturday when while we were talking. I said it. I said. We go, um, Onana should not be allowed to play for the Cameroon national team. Mm. I, I think the the, the Cameroon goalkeeper, the one that played yesterday, Ondoa. Did, did not really do bad. So I, I don't see any reason why Onana should come back in. I mean, he has not been with the team for a while. He just came back. He finished playing on Sunday and just joined, and just joined the team early hours of yesterday. So, I mean, it's not in the right frame of mind to man the post. I think it would be a great disservice to Ondoa and the rest of the team who has been in camp all this while, while Onana was away trying to protect his, his paycheck in, in Manchester United. So for me, if you ask me, I would say you go play song should stick to Ondoa, to be honest with you. So, Maya, well, let me ask you before we go on a break. Uh, let me share this one with you now. Uh, despite his best effort, Andrew Onana has failed to make the squad for Cameroon. Uh, he failed to make the squad for the Cameroon first game. And also, uh, he played, Man United played the 2-2 two -two with Stoddy Amospor. He gets on the flight to Ivory Coast after the game. And also, flight for Cameroon game delayed due to weather. And all of this did not work out. Is this a bad omen for Andrew Onana? Well, it's, it's, it's a bad omen for him, to be honest with you. I mean, he, he has been having a very terrible season, to be honest. I mm. mean, he's considered yeah. over 43 goals. I mean, how many keepers in the world? After about 23 games, has considered 43 goals. I mean, how many goalkeepers in the world can, you know, can lay claim to that? I mean, he's having a very terrible season. And to be honest, he's not even helping matters. I would have expected that when the call came, for the nation's cup right, he would right. have you know uh, been the first person on the plane but i mean he didn't do that so he should face the music all right let, let, let's hold your thoughts there maiwa uh, we'll take a quick uh, break a sports republic will be back in a moment uh, please uh, stay tuned Welcome, you're still watching Sports Republic on VOP TV. You know, the show comes your way every weekdays from Monday to Friday. We run the show for you, myself, and the big man as well with me in the studio right now, uh, Jerry. But let's move up. Jerry, let me ask you this question. Let me get your take on this. Do you think there are still minors of football? 
Yeah, there used to be minnows in football, <laughs> right. but um, time has shown that there's nobody that's a minnows. We saw what okay. happened in Morocco mm -hmm. at the World Cup. Even this Nations Cup, are right. proving the, whether you like it or not, there will be minnows. Okay. Because you cannot compare a team that has Mohamed Salah with a team that does not have Mohamed Salah. So what, what's happening so far? What's happening when so far? When we're seeing results like this, what do you call it? Like I said to someone, like it looks like it might be the year of the underdog. We've oh. seen this happen <laughs> at the Euros and so on and so forth. Maybe the Nations Cup mm. is going to prove another year for the underdogs. Okay, so let's move on to the story again. Our Mauritania are still on the African Cup of Nations, uh, just like in Inktenau. This one happens to be our priority. We give you all of this update. Mauritania against Burkina Faso for today's game. Uh, Minos Mauritania will aim to down big boys. You know, Burkina Faso, Mauritania's coach Ami Abdo is hoping a side can mix it up with some of the best teams in the continent uh, when they take on Burkina Faso in their opening group D encounter. Uh, the 24 Africa Cup of Nations later today at 3 p.m. local time. Burkina Faso go into uh, the tournament uh, on the back of a 2-1 win against Congo DR in a friendly match that took place on the 10th of January. In four matches uh, prior, the Stallions recorded two wins, one draw and also a defeat across the board, which included a 2-1 victory against Mauritania in a friendly tie that was played out on the Perry Jago Stadium on the 17th of October 2023. Mauritania, on the other hand, are winless in their last four matches in all competition and jotted down two consecutive goalless draw against South Sudan and Tunisia in the most recent fixtures. Prior to the above mentioned ties, Mauritania recorded defeat to Congo DR and Burkina Faso uh, with the last victory taking place in the state El Valche when they bagged a 2-1 win over Madagascar in a friendly match. Mayo Yes. I want to ask you this one again. You just heard Jerry say, uh, Jerry, what did you say to get about Minos? No Minos? Yeah, no Minos, but whether you like it or not, <laughs> you still need to look at bigger teams and, of course, the teams that don't have the top quality right. players. So, okay. somehow you call them Minos, but okay. you have to be forgiven. Okay, so, for Maya, come on this now. Do we have Minos on football? Let me get your take. Uh, well, definitely, uh, the, the word we know is just for the dictionary's sake. <laughs> it's going to be 11 11. Okay. I mean, uh, but, but, but in any case, there's, there, there, are, there are big teams and there are smaller teams. Mm. What, what we usually have is the smaller team, you know, someone in the courage to show the big team that, you know, it's 11, 11 versus 11 and we can shock you if you don't take your time. I mean, the results so far have shown that um, there are no my, there are no minnows in, in, the, in the Nations Cup. I mean, um, today will be an avenue for Mauritania to be able to show Burkina Faso that they can shock them. I mean, you see keep beating... Um, Ghana, you see, uh, uh, and Egypt, you know, escaping with a draw. They were so they were so fortunate to be able to to to, to be under the draw. So right. it shows that you know the, sm the smaller teams in the Nations Cup, they are ready for battle. I mean, yeah. you know, I mean, says something. Right. Um, yeah. your course your course says something the other time that this might be the year for the Minos. Yeah. It takes me to Euro, Euro 2004. Mm. Nobody gave Greece the chance, and they ended up winning the tournament. Great. So yeah. the same can still happen in this year of con. Okay. <laughs> uh, all right, I don't know if we can take Joseph now because he said he's on his way do, to do, the. Do we have him on the standby? Joseph, where, do we have you? Joseph, are you there? Hello, Joseph. Uh, we we have to have him on the standby. All right, all right. Good morning, and um, yeah, good morning from um, um, Abidjan here. Yeah. Woo! Uh, what do you think of the controversy of Val Umar Sadiq's? Uh, uh, talking about uh, faking his injury. Yeah. Oh, sorry. Uh, okay. Uh, since the network is a big, big, big problem okay. out there, live because. But let's go back to more uh, stories around where we have uh, the second game where Tunisia will trade tackles with Namibia. Mm. Uh, Namibia International, uh, Dion Hoto, the result special praise for coach Colin Benjamin ahead of the Brave Warriors opening Group E African Cup of Nations clash against Tunisia and their model. Gon Kolibali Stadium on Tuesday evening. All right, the Carthage Eagles are one of the best performing teams on the African continent as far as recent form is concerned. Unbeaten in their last four matches across the board, Jalal Kadri's side managed to back three wins, one draw and one defeat in their previous five encounters. Colin Benjamin's side, on the other hand, recorded just one win in their last eight matches in all competitions. Heading into the showpiece, Namibia recorded three, three stalemates, one defeat, and just the single victory 
in their last of these five fixtures. It's okay, a big uh, one that's, a, that's a very big one uh, for Namibia. But I think hope I could say the Tunisian side on paper looks to be the better side. But let's quickly give you more update on that very one. Mali uh, will be playing against South Africa. On the last game for today, the Eagles of Mali will slug it out with the Bafana Bafana of South Africa. Mali head coach Eric Chele says, the fact that most of South African players play domestically is not a uh, disadvantage. On the contrary, the coach believes that this could work to South Africa as advantage. And also, Chile was speaking to uh, Kahogo Amdo at uh, Konkolibali Stadium when the West Africans are preparing to kick off their 13th Cup African Cup of Nations campaign against South Africa on Tuesday evening. And that's today, the last Cup outcome meeting between the two sides when was South Africa well, the host back in 2013 where the, you know, the Eagles edged them on penalties during the quarter final. They met again in 2019 during the friendly in South Africa. Yeah, the Bafana Bafana of South Africa emerged. Two nil victors uh, in that very game. And also coach Hugo Bros squad is mainly made up of locally based players with a few exceptions such as winning Cup Interclub Player of the Year, Pace Tao, who is playing a trade in the Egyptian very big side and that's uh, Al Ali. So we talk about this one again, Jerry, you see my point. Um, on paper, Namibia, Tunisia, who's the better side? Definitely Tunisia. They have the squads. And of course, take a look at their president down to this nation's cup. They won a lot of games. They made it count. And they formidable side. So you want to count Tunisia against Namibia and India. And of course, mm. you want to look at it. You want to say Namibia are the minnows, why Tunisia mm. are the big boys. Okay, so let's go on to this one now. The FIFA, the best award. Before we talk about this, I've got time for me to run. Uh, Mayawa. Yes. We talk about this weekly now. I just want I just want it in one word, just say to me, was it a fair award given to Messi yesterday? Ah well, you know, um myself and you we spoke about it about a month ago, about two months ago there about. <laughs> and uh, I think, you know, because of the World Cup here, mm. I mean, so definitely they will be probably looking at Messi. So I mean it is deserved, to be honest with well, you. Definitely. I think Messi deserves it. Okay, so let's quickly share Messi deserves it. Let's share this with yes. you now. Messi wins the male player. Argentina forward Lionel Messi has won the men's player of the year at the FIFA Best Award with Manchester City manager Pep Guardiola claiming the men's coach prize in London. That was the fourth time for this man. Now Inter Miami Messi edged out City striker Alan Bert Haaland while Paris and German Kylian Mbappe came to another that one. City Ederson collected a goalkeeper award ahead of Real Madrid, Thibaut Couture and Al Elance Yasson Bono. City won the treble of Premier League, sorry, the treble round, the Premier League, the Champions League and the FA Cup uh, just for last season. Messi 36 began 2023 at Paris and German before moving to major side, talk about league soccer club, Inter Miami in June. He picked up the best men player of the time and that's the third time since the format of the award began in 2016 after doing so in 2019 and 2022 respectively. Meanwhile, Spanish, uh, you know, 23 World Cup winner, Aita Bordati, I'm liking the name, Aita Bordati, plays for Barcelona, was voted as the best women player of the year. The Spaniard also, uh, before winning the treble with City, last time has achieved the same feat at Barcelona in 2008 and 2009 season, dedicating her award to fellow nominees, Simon Izai and Luciano Spalletti. Serena Vigman also claimed the best women coach prize after leading England to the World Cup final. We had the last one here to the Spanish side. And seven of her lionesses were included in the women world 11, including Mary Epps in the goal post, who also took the best women goalkeeper award. Uh, we talk about next thing now, Jerry. Let's quickly let's see this. Messi, is that for you? Yeah, unarguably is uh, FIFA's uh, child. I don't know what you're saying. I'll, I'll pretend, I'll, 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 I'll pretend <laughs> like you don't know what you're saying. Definitely FIFA still has to win the award when he has just won the World Cup. <laughs> but was it fair? Yeah, I mean, it's fair. FIFA, FIFA hosts the World Cup. Right. The World Cup is the biggest competition right. in the world oh, the as FIFA far as football as well. is concerned. Mm -hmm. So the award, any award that belongs to FIFA, outright it has to be given to the player who played better in mm. their competition, which was just the last World Cup. So... You sound, you, say, Jeremy, you sound like you, you're one of those persons that say Alan should wait for his time. No, Alan will have to wait for his time. Unfortunately, <laughs> time? unfortunately he plays for a country who has no chance of winning the World Cup. Oh, that's true, actually. Yeah, that is uh, Norway. Right. And uh, if that continues to be the case, he will have to rely on Manchester City mm. to have an opportunity to win an award as big as the FIFA, the best award. Okay, so, uh, Mayawa, let me ask you this quickly now. Uh, the part that, uh, you know, Messi, Messi uh, happened to win the FIFA, the best award, and not being in the first 11 of the FIFA, the best award. How does this work for you? I mean, how do you explain this to the kids on the street? 
Uh, well, you know, you, you, you know, award award is determined by votes. Okay. I mean, and uh, you know, play, player selection is determined by some set of experts. So basically, I think Messi has the, the highest vote, and that's the reason why he won. However, if you look at it, like like what Jerry said, I mean, the the World Cup plays a major role in in, yeah. in the in the awards that Messi has won. Mm. I mean, Messi was the most the MVP for the 2022 World Cup. And, you know, and that's the reason why you have Messi on the lips of everyone. I think that's the last award you'll probably, probably win because, I mean, he doesn't really play in a league that is very competitive right. like he used to in the last two years. So basically, it's just more like a send forth for him. And to be honest, he actually deserves it, to okay. be honest. All right. <laughs> All right, let's go to more stories this time around where Argentinian legend Diego Maradona's son, Diego Armando Maradona Jr. says he's convinced his father did not die a natural death. Mm. Uh, record that Diego Maradona passed away in November 2020 as a result of heart failure and pulmonary edema. Uh, during the time, Maradona was recuperating from brain surgery at his home in Buenos Aires. However, in the chat with me, they said Maradona Jr. stated that he knows the culprit to the death of his father and uh, will continue to fight for justice until the last day of his life. Oh, okay. Of oh, that's a memory, uh, Diego Armando Maradona, I would say his memory lives on. I would not forget, uh, maybe he wasn't born at that point, but you say 1989, 1986, walk up the hand of God. Uh, we'll still remember that man, Evergreen. But let's go to more stories. Uh, coaching, Jose Mourinho sacked by AS Roma, according to reports. AS Roma have announced the manager, that manager Mourinho and the staff have left the club. Mourinho took charge of Roma ahead of the 2012 2021 22 season and led them to Europa Conference League glory during the first campaign. Uh, you know, why they finished as runners up to Sevilla in the Europa League last term, losing the final on penalties. And after that, the dismissal first half to the 24 season, Roma have decided to part ways with Mourinho confirming the sacking uh, in a statement on Tuesday morning. I don't know how that sounds for me. Yeah, sad. too too sad for Mourinho, but we know that Mourinho is still in the market. He's still right. the top manager. He's a big manager. I see yeah. when you talk about Mourinho, you talk about Mourinho with all energy. I mean, the yeah, big man. Mourinho is you know. a big man, whether you like it or not. And mm. of course, he's done well with Roma, whether you like it or not. And they, they decide to let him go. Who's lost? Maybe they've decided to look other ways. Did you sound like it wasn't the right call? Whip. You don't think it was right? Yeah, he has, he has done the same work for a Roman side. Right, we know. Winning uh, the Conference League is no mean feat. Right. And of course, Take a look I mean, at the their first position. Time in the history. Yeah, and look at look at their position in the uh, Italian Serie A. Mm. I, I think it's still fair enough, but maybe they have bigger goals. Let's see who is going to replace your Whether <laughs> he's the man that's going to give them those bigger goals. It sounds that sounds very deep for me. Yeah, but anybody, uh, we've, we've seen managers. Mayowa, we've seen managers, right? Hello, are you there? Oh, I guess we lost him around. Jerry, are we, we've seen the thing is, the the the, the third season course continues again. I mean, the, the third season course oh, continues oh, again. Oh, I mean, oh, 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 that sounds like a true one, though, but I don't want to believe in that, though. Yeah. No, I mean, ju ju just check it out. The same thing happened with Manchester United, the same thing with Madrid, the same thing with Chelsea the, the, the first time around. So, I mean, it continues again. However, the thing is, is I, 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 I think the management of Roma, they have been very unfair to Mourinho sacking him. How, I mean, how, how he has a whole lot of players on the injury list. Oh, okay, he doesn't cool. have the kind of player he wants to be able to get on with the season. Mm. The injury list is, the players on the injury list, they are so much. Mm -hmm. Yes, the result has been poor and the rest of that. Mm. But a coach that gave you the Conference League and took you to the Europa League final, coming second, I mean, should, they, they, they probably needed to give him more yeah. more time. I mean, sacking him is just um, a knee-jerk reaction, and I hope he doesn't come back to haunt them um, later in the season. Okay. However, like Jerry said, Moreno is still a big coach, and, and other you know, bigger clubs will be looking forward to getting his signature for, for him to be able to take them to the next level. All right, we'll see how that pans out. Okay, Jerry, take us to Chelsea right now, quickly. Yeah, former Chelsea star Joe Cole has said the Blues are yet to find a replacement for John Obi Mikel. Mm. Cole made the claim as a guest on Mikel's podcast, Obi Wan. Uh, the 42 year old was teammate with Mikel at Chelsea for four years from 2006 to 2010 before the former England international joined Liverpool ahead of the 2010 2011 season. At Chelsea, both players won the Premier League, FA Cup, League Cup, and Community Shield. And reflecting on how Mikel ended up becoming an important player at Chelsea, Cole said there was a big furor because of the Manchester United connection in the press, and it was like uh, he did sign for Manchester United under Alex Ferguson, who was eventually furious. Uh, Chelsea was fighting for him, and he said that I quote that to myself, he must be a hell of a player. He must be unbelievable 
because everyone wanted him. And Mikel went on to help the Blues land a first UFA Champions League title in 2012. Okay, so that's the news for Mikhail. But quickly before we leave the show, uh, some top series will do Australian Open. Russian Medvedev got a scar. And that's our story for Australian Open. But Mayawa, thank you so, so much. Hello, Mayawa. Thank you so, so yeah, much. Yeah, thank you. Thank you so, so much for sticking around. We hope to have you some other time again. We talk about the Nations Cup coming up, the Nigerian game on Thursday. Yeah, well, I, I, I hope Nigeria does well. I hope they don't give us heart attack on Thursday. All right, thank have you. a great day. Do we have a great day? <laughs> You're just yeah, being optimistic too. Thank on that. You. Thank you so, so much, Maya. Wow, Jerry, uh, we need to go now. But you're heading. What's your take on Nigerian game? Yeah, Mike, I want can, to can keep, we talk about it now? I want to keep my fingers crossed. Okay. You know, as far as we are concerned, we are playing the host nation. Mm. So I don't want to keep my hopes up. Let's just see what's going to happen on Thursday. Okay, thank you so, so much. This is where we have to call it to wrap on the show. We need to draw the curtains close here because we need to go. Tomorrow happens to be another time on the Sports Republic right here on VOP TV. But till we meet again, I am Kizike and I'm Kamaima. All right now.